Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and this is the last week, of, I believe it's the last week of Little League Baseball for this fall, and I gotta be honest, I am sick and tired of baseball games. My eight-year-old has been playing a lot of games this season, and I'm ready for a break. The break time is my favorite time because that's when I get to, we don't, we don't, they don't have practices all the time and all that business, and so I get to rest and just work with them myself, and this, my schedule's not near as crazy. So, looking forward to that. Now, XRP Bart sent me this today uh, from Grayscale. The Form 10 we filed with the SEC on behalf of Grayscale Ethereum Trust has become effective, which makes Grayscale Ethereum Trust only the second digital currency investment vehicle to become an SEC reporting company. Now, I'm not, I, I can't tell you this for sure, but I'm, I'm assuming or I think that this means that you could, at some of these brokerage firms, like a Schwab or an E-Trade, you'll be able to go and buy into this trust through like your account. I'm assuming that that's what this means. Um, like you can buy their, the GBTC, you can buy the Bitcoin one through, through um, one of those companies or some of those companies. And I think that's what this means for this one. So now just retail individuals will be able to buy into it. I think is what that means. XRP Yo-Yo, let the bull run begin. Breaking news, the biggest Bitcoin transaction in history was sent literally just now. Um, and this is 88,857 Bitcoin worth $1.15 billion. The ridiculously low fee of, I'm assuming that, does that say three dollars and fifty four cents? They're using a comma instead of a decimal point. I'm not sure if that's what the fee would have been anyway. Um, but anyway, that's interesting stuff as well. Now, um, Sir Gordon Gecko had tweeted this out today. This caught my attention big time. BlackRock downgrades U.S. Treasuries ahead of election. Now, folks, for a long time I've been talking to you about what are the safe havens? What are the safe havens? When you have a a um, financial crisis, uh, we've talked about how traditionally those the, the number one safe haven and where people traditionally have gone over the last say fifty years has been to U.S. Treasuries. They're they're considered the most safe conservative investment. For BlackRock to be downgrading U.S. Treasuries, that's a big deal, folks. That's a real big deal because it's U.S. Treasuries. And then it's precious metals for safe haven. And then guess what? It's, it's things like the Swiss franc, but, it, but we have a new digital asset class. We have Bitcoin and XRP this time for the first time since the 1600s. This means something. I'm just telling you. All right. Um, then this from Jonathan D. Creditors finally wake up to an apocalyptic reality. Bond losses as high as 99%. Just those two things that I just showed you right here, the BlackRock downgrade and this right here, 99% an apocalyptic reality. I mean, that is terrifying if you don't have precious metals and crypto as a solution. It's almost as if this is a setup. You know what an alley-oop is? Um, as I recall, when, you, when a player throws up like a basketball player, throws up the bat. It's been a while since I've played basketball, but I played all the time as a kid. An alley-oop is where you throw up the ball and then the guy comes in and dunks it. I think I said that right. Well, it's almost like this is an alley-oop, a setup for this new financial system. That's what it feels like. Okay, then there was this, um, breaking. According to draft instructions released by the IRS on October 23rd, if you just held crypto on a wallet account and or transferred crypto between wallets accounts you own during 2020, you do not have to disclose this to the IRS by checking yes. Okay, so you might want to run, go buy that one with your accountant. 
Okay, and then James Rule, he, he um, sent me this. Get bailed out of jail with crypto. U.S. bail funds are seeking, seeking an uptick in cryptocurrency donations. The Bail Project, Co Chicago Community Bond Fund, and Nashville Community Bail Fund now accept crypto donations in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and even BAT. All right. Um, Riz XRP sent me this. Now, this is interesting right here. Look at this. This October discussion of European CBDCs shows Ripple playing a role for small bank cross-border transactions, explicitly naming XRapid without contest text. It looks like a statement that it, it is already happening. However, finality isn't operational yet, or is it? And this is the document that he's pulling this from. It's from Wrath of Conlon, by the way. Central Bank Digital Currency, the European Perspective, 7th of October, 2020. Nordic, it says Nordic Lead Digital Asset and DLT. As you go down, look what it shows you. Right here. Large Correspondent Bank, Swift Correspondent Bank. Small Bank, Ripple X Rapid, IBM Worldwire, which uses Stellar. And then you have Finality, and it shows the, the movement of these funds. And it shows crypto here. This is a big deal, folks. Um, and then, let's see, I think that's that's all there was there. Now, um, 432XRP sent me this for years. JP Morgan was skeptical of Bitcoin. Now the bank's analysts say its value could triple. Challenge gold. So all of a sudden, JP Morgan is bullish on this. Now, I am Legion put together a great thread for this. He says, JPM manipulating crypto. We wouldn't do that. And then he's got a wink. This is the article I've shown you before. Trump administration popped the 2017 Bitcoin bubble, says ex-CFTC chair. Uh, and I remember reading this story. This is Chris Giancarlo, who now runs the Digital Dollar Project. He said that he sat in a room and they all planned to introduce these futures. And it was per the Trump administration. They planned to tank to rein in Bitcoin prices, okay, which ultimately reined in the rest of the market. And then he shows us this, silver. J.P. Morgan settled for an undisclosed amount of a lawsuit that accused the firm of spoofing trades in the precious metals market. The suit by hedge, uh, da, da, da. So there they are, there, there they are manipulating silver. Nobody goes to jail that I'm aware of. J.P. Morgan Chase faces a fine of 920 million for market manipulations. They were spoofing. Uh, former J.P. Morgan trader convicted of price fixing FX market. Um, treasuries over eight years, 15 tra traders at the biggest U.S. bank caused losses of more than $300 million to other participants. This is J.P. Morgan as well. Gold. J.P. Morgan accused of gold price manipulation. So it's all there, folks, over and over and over. And the common theme is nobody goes to jail. They pay a big fine, but the fine is probably always smaller than what they made on doing the fraudulent transactions. We don't ever get those things. Now, I want to give proper credit here. I, I was on Twitter and I saw that Kevin Cage and some other people were um, had had brought this to some people's attention. Back on April 1st of 2019, Brad Garlinghouse had made this um, announcement as being a founding member of the INATBA. All right, I'll show you that here in a second. First, I was going to show you the video. Hi, I'm Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO here at Ripple. It's an honor and really a privilege for us to be one of the founding members of the International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications. This really is a pivotal time for the distributed ledger technology industry. It's critical that as an industry, we come together and engage with regulators and with governments globally. The work we're seeing in, with the European Commission is pivotal and can be leading in this effort. We're thrilled to be involved and look forward to being a leading participant. So I don't remember who it was, but I saw someone and I think Kevin Cage was interacting with them. And by the way, give him a follow at Kevin underscore Cage underscore, because he is a very, very good uh, on Twitter for with XRP, has a great uh, YouTube channel. Go give, go on YouTube and give him a subscribe. It's Kevin Cage. And he's got an like a professional um, radio voice or YouTube voice, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, a lot better than my voice, I can promise you that. Uh, but here's that I N A. Well, I don't know the letter I N A T B A A International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications, 
And they were making the point that they were asking, someone online was asking why Ripple was not in it anymore because you, you do have a lot of names you'll recognize, Accenture. Um, you go down, um, you'll see, I saw down here like R3. There's Cardano. Um, as we go down, Distributed Ledger Consulting. And then as you go down, you'll see IBM's right there. And then, let's see. R3, there's Quant. That are, I, I see people talking about Quant a lot these days. There's Saya. Um, so anyway, the point is, is that Ripple is no longer a part of this apparently, or maybe they just forgot to add their logo. Who knows? But somebody was asking them. Now, David Schwartz tweeted out two things today. This, he I haven't listened to this yet. He says, I caught up with CEO Vogelbit. This is Daniel Vogel um, of Bitso on how Bitso is building real use cases in Mexico, one of the world's fastest growing crypto markets. And then he also tweeted this out. Here's a message I wrote on a card to a Ripple employee who shall remain anonymous, not Brad Garlinghouse, though it would have been funnier if it was. And this is a card that David Schwartz um, sent somebody. Thanks for everything you've done at Ripple. You will be missed. What? You're not leaving? Then why am I filling out why am I filling out? Oh, anniversary. Got it. Thanks for keeping the ripple ship pointed in the right direction. P.S. Yes, comic sense. If it works for a lemonade stand, it works for a multi-billion dollar fintech company, David Schwartz. And he's got a picture of his hair with Brad Garlinghouse's face. <laughs> I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family that David Schwartz is always tweeting all kinds of things that are sometimes have more meaning than what you see. And I'm always wondering when I see things, if he's trying to send some kind of a message, you never know with him. Thanks for listening. Every day, billions of people around the world are mocked, ridiculed, laughed at, and embarrassed by their friends, family, and even strangers. These people go through their days knowing there are secrets being kept from them. They hear the faint whispers behind closed doors. The information and knowledge is held very close and only shared with others who were fortunate enough to find out. Feeling lost, rejected and ostracized, these people give up, never finding out what digital assets the digital asset investor holds. But there is hope. Join the free Digital Asset Investor email newsletter and find out what digital assets he owns each month, including investments he's considering. Click the link in the description of this video or go to digitalassetinvestornewsletter.com. Put an end to your days of gloom and depression. Join the greatest free digital asset email newsletter ever created.